today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the best foods that you can eat in the winter season. So I talked a little bit about the winter season on my blog a few weeks ago. I think the article is titled, um, Why You Should Embrace the Cold and Dark in This Winter Season. And there are some really good reasons before you turn the video off. There really are. <laughs> um, so if you want to check that out and read a little bit more on my thoughts on winter and why it really is such a great season for us, um, hop on over there to drlizcarter.com. But um, so this is part of the article where I wrote about foods in winter and I just wanted to highlight it a little bit because I think it's really important um, to look at eating seasonally. I know that's a big um, idea that's out there right now, right? Eating with the seasons, eating a little bit more farm to table, right? Which is inherently a little bit more with the seasons. So um, I just wanted to add the perspective of Chinese medicine in there because I think it's a really unique view um, and, it, and it really does have some, some great impacts on your health, some lasting effects. Um, so I wanted to talk about best foods for winter, and then I'll also give you some tips on what foods maybe to avoid a little bit more in winter that I think we're kind of all guilty of. There are a few healthy foods and healthy options, healthy quote unquote, um, that we tend to gravitate towards, especially in New Year's when we're trying to redo our diet and eat well, um, that are actually really not great fits for the winter season. Um, and I'm not saying that's why people stop kind of making that progress on their diet, but it can be if you're not eating foods that are congruent with the season, energetically congruent with your body at that time, um, even where you live affects the foods that, that could be helpful to eat. Um, you know, it can be a reason why it, it would be much harder um, to succeed at that time of year. So let's dive in a little bit to winter foods here in Chinese medicine. So the properties of the foods that we're looking for in winter are salty, um, so the taste, and then the color is more blue-black. So if you've read any of my um, articles on my blog about the seasons, you know that there's a lot of these different correlations in Chinese medicine um, in terms of taste and sound and color and movement, kind of the energy of the season, um, as well as, uh, yeah, color. So they, in Chinese medicine, all these things are really important to pay attention to for each season that you're in because they do inform how you're going to feel and how you're going to do um, best living within the seasons, really taking these ideas into account with, yeah, with maybe how much energy you're putting out um, or maybe what tastes you might be drawn to uh, at that time of year. So salty um, is makes a lot of sense. So when we think about salt, and unrefined salt, it's chock full of minerals. So um, minerals are super crucial to our survival. They're absolutely essential. Um, and it's very similar to how we feel in winter. So the energy of winter is kind of this cold, dark, slow down. And we also don't have a lot of resources during that time of year, right? We, we depend on the other parts of the year to build up our resources and make sure we have enough to make it through winter. So we've got this big kind of storage effect that happens in winter. And we can look at the salty taste as kind of a similar thing. We absolutely knew, need a storage of minerals to be able to survive. If we don't have enough minerals um, and we have too much water, we end up risking um, serious side effects, right? We get weird things in blood pressure, maybe our heart doesn't beat right, it's a big deal. Um, our kidneys won't function correctly. So I did, yeah, I did another video on water if you wanna learn a little bit more about what I'm talking about there a few weeks ago. But, um, so salt is incredibly crucial to our survival and winter kind of challenges our deepest survival needs because we really don't have a lot of resources available there. Um, so by replenishing and, and indulging in a little bit more salt around this time of year, you're actually helping out quite a bit. Um, and when I talk about salt, I really do mean high mineral salt, not the refined stuff, not like Morton salt, which is really just sodium and chloride with a little iodine added back in. That's the stuff that gets the bad rap. That's the stuff that um, is inflammatory and will raise your blood pressure um, and is not great overall. When you're talking about high mineral salt, um, it's really, really helpful. It's anti-inflammatory. It can lower blood pressure because a lot of times blood pressure goes up when we don't have enough of the right minerals. Um, so repleting these minerals is really helpful. It's also great for your adrenal glands and your kidney function. And the organs of winter is, um, are kidney and urinary bladder in Chinese medicine. Now they're not one-to-one -one with Western organs, but this function in particular with kidneys and water metabolism 
um, and mineral kind of reabsorption does really relate um, eastern to western that way. So um, you can see lots of stuff coordinated with the winter season that kind of gets wrapped up into these, um, into salty or, or the color even. Um, so yeah, so salty foods, and I know a lot of people really love salty foods. Um, I think a lot of times when people are craving salt, they're actually craving minerals because those used to be the same thing, right? We used to not have refined salt. Um, we'd have just high mineral salt. So you kind of want to think about that. If you feel like you're a really, um, you know, a person that craves a lot of salt, um, it really might be a minerals issue and you want to work on getting that high mineral salt in. Um, in my blog post, I have a link to my favorite high mineral salt and my favorite company where to get all that. So check that out if you'd like to. Um, so moving on to the color. So blue black is the color of winter, which I think is really easy to see, right? It's a very dark time of year. We get this kind of blue black and even purplish kind of dusky around sunset, um, and, um, sunrise. So why there's two colors, there's usually only one color associated with the season, but this is kind of a cool story. Um, so originally the color of winter was black because that is the color that we saw. We couldn't see blue. Um, at the time, Chinese medicine started being recorded around 2500 BC. So it's really neat um, to see when that color gene develops. We all start to be able to see blue, and then they start recording the color of water um, as blue, which is pretty neat. So we've got this blue-black color. So we're looking for that color in foods mainly. And it's not always one-to-one, -one, right? You know, I think most people would think immediately of, oh, blueberries, but blueberries are really that um, late spring, early summer um, kind of fruit, right? So so not always appropriate, but, um, but most of the time, right? We want to think of kind of this dark, dusky color of vegetable um, that is in season in the winter. Um, so that's kind of where the blue-black comes in. And then I wrote down a few examples for you here. So I think it's really interesting in that, you know, when I was researching foods for winter through Chinese medicine, there's not a ton that come up, which makes total sense. At first I was like, oh man, I'm not gonna have much to show them, but right, winter, there's not a lot that grows. <laughs> there's not a lot going on there. And when you think about salt, it's very easy to overdo it and, and have too much. So when you have these salty and rich foods, you, you immediately kind of, you eat less, right? You kind of adapt um, and get full and satiated um, more quickly. So in that way, I was like, oh, of course, right, that makes sense that there's not a ton to talk about. Um, so you can see that there are very few vegetables on this list, of course, right? Because um, there's not a lot that grows. And in terms of vegetables, the ones that we do have, like celery, um, artichoke, parsley, celery and artichoke especially, they come up pretty early in the spring, right? Artichoke is one of those first spring plants. Um, so you can see that that even though um, we've got some vegetables, they are still probably at the tail end of that winter energy. Because, um, you know, March 20th, 21st, I can never remember for, for spring um, hits, we're not automatically into that springtime, right? We still got the energy of winter waning. So it makes sense that maybe even a little bit into, um, into that spring season, you would have kind of some of these winter vegetables coming up. Um, kale is definitely a winter vegetable. People tend to plant that in their beds um, during the winter because it actually um, restores mineral balance that other plants deplete during the spring and summer. So that's pretty neat. Um, so kale is definitely that winter vegetable, and especially if you think of dino kale, it's that really rich, deep, kind of greenish, blue, black color, right? That is a perfect kidney and winter um, vegetable. So the rest of the list, we really have a lot of seafood, right? Because seafood, of course, comes from the sea. It's inherently salty. Winter is correlated with the water element in Chinese medicine, so seafood comes from the water. It's all interconnected. Um, so of course we've got anchovies, sardines, oysters, herring, um, cod, lobster, crab, all of these things. I would even wager things like salmon, which does have a little bit more of a sweet taste, which is more of, of the earth or late summer season, um, but most foods do have some sweetness to them because that earth season is really crucial um, for, for most of our food. Um, but it would still, it's from the sea, it's going to be salty and briny, so anything along that line. Um, I don't have it on here, but cured meats even too, right, like bacon, salami, anything like that. If you think about the salty factor, how did we used to preserve, and still do, 
um, foods, right? We would, we would put them in salt. We'd even have um, a smokehouse or a salt house, right? Where we would salt cure all of the meats to make it through winter. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's part of where this salt can come in with land animals as well. So, and then I also have broth on here, which I think is a really important addition. Um, we talked about making your own vegetable stock a few weeks ago. And broth should be kind of rich and salty and unctuous and delicious, right? That's kind of the time of year that we're in. We, we do expend a lot of energy keeping our body warm. Um, and, and we will sweat and we need to get those minerals back in. So broth is just, it's very soothing, it's very comforting, it's warm, which counteracts the cold outside. It's just a fabulous, fabulous food. And you know, I think we all get drawn towards soups um, in the fall and winter anyway. So it's really great to have that broth on hand. And with that salty and um, salty fluid you're taking in, the salt is great for the kidneys. And the fluid is great for the kidneys in Chinese medicine. Um, because as we age, we have, we each have yin and yang, right? They're the, the balance of, of kind of life force in Chinese medicine. And yang is this active, energetic, moving, um, engaging side. And yin is this slower, um, dark, less movement, kind of secluded um, side. So in, in our culture, we all tend to burn through the yin really quickly, right? We don't give ourselves a lot of downtime or time to rest and recover. Um, so as we age, we often end up with something called kidney yin deficiency. And it's very common in women, and that's a very common Chinese medicine diagnosis. Um, if you have hot flashes, um, we look at that as kidney yin deficiency. So anything that's kind of fluid and salty can really help to rebuild that kidney yin. Um, and kidney in Chinese medicine is also, not only is it important for mineral balance, but it's really the reserves. It's our source of energy. It's what we draw on when we're chronically stressed. So anything you can do to restore that balance to the kidney is really, really helpful. So that's kind of where the broth comes in, is you've got this fluid that restores the yin, and then the salt that rebuilds minerals, helps the adrenals, helps the kidneys. It's a really, really fantastic food. Um, and then, yeah, and then we've got miso, right, which is a fermented soy paste that is very salty as well. Um, and then black beans, right? So I really, really like black beans for the winter because we've got that black um, color that goes along with winter. Beans are, they're very hearty. It's great to eat beans and rice. Um, it's easy on the digestion. It has a lot of fiber. Um, they're just a really lovely source of a lot of um, minerals and nutrients as well. So that's kind of, that's kind of the overview for the winter foods. Um, yeah, I really, I hope that was helpful. Um, oh, right. I wanted to talk to you about the uh, things maybe not to eat in the winter. So especially in cold, damp climates like Seattle, where I'm from, um, the dampness can be really, really hard on people's digestive systems. So in Chinese medicine, all of these foods have energetic properties, which are hot or cold um, or warming or, or cool. So kind of a, a gradation in there. But, and when I talk about hot or cold, um, I don't mean actual temperature of the food. You know, if you eat something that's piping hot or something that's been in the fridge, it's, the, it's an energetic quality to it. So all of the winter foods that are great are warming, right? Because the season is cold. So that's a really important thing to focus on in the winter is to eat warming things. You know, if you're gonna drink tea, I would probably recommend a ginger tea, which is nice and warming for the circulation over peppermint, which is very cooling. That's a little bit more appropriate for summer and spring. So um, people tend to, especially when we're looking at, at healthy foods, quote unquote, um, people tend to eat a lot of salads, right? A big salad is, is super healthy and great. Um, and from a Chinese medicine perspective, that can actually be really, really hard on your digestion. So um, they look at raw fruits and raw vegetables as very cold on the digestion and that that really should, they really should be eaten more in the summer um, or if you are geographically located somewhere where it's warm most of the year, um, that can be a little bit more appropriate. But what happens when we put 
cold into our digestive system is that it just kind of sits. It doesn't really get digested and then it can cause loose stools and diarrhea um, because our body just doesn't have the energy to warm it up in the same way we do as the summer when we're aided by the environment. We're already in the winter needing to warm us from the cold, needing to dry out some of the damp um, and those cold fruits and vegetables um, dampen the digestive fire in Chinese medicine. That's what we look at as. We, we want to stoke that digestive fire and really um, feed it foods that are appropriate to the season and to your health to get it to work in an optimal fashion. So um, in the winter, if you're going to do vegetables, that doesn't mean cut out vegetables entirely, of course, but really make sure you cook them. You know, I, I would really recommend against the large salads and leafy greens um, and go with some cooked kale or cooked sweet potatoes, you know, cooked whatever you'd like to, to add in. Um, and then really focus on those raw vegetables when they're in season in the spring and the summer. Um, in Seattle, I feel like we have a very short window <laughs> to eat those um, raw vegetables because, you know, it, it stays pretty cold and damp and that excess cold in the digestive tract can also cause damp and damp is one of those feelings that makes you feel kind of bloated and um, like you're retaining a lot of water, a little bit um, foggy headed, heavy limbs, um, yeah, that, that type of, of thing. So it's not real pleasant. <laughs> it's nice to avoid if you can. So eating those warming foods and salty foods and brothy foods um, around this time of year can be much more helpful. And you might really notice an improvement in your digestion if you get rid of some of those raw fruits and vegetables and really shift the, the um, equilibrium in your diet over to more cooked and warming things. Um, you certainly don't have to get rid of them all, it's just looking at them more in moderation. So from a Chinese medicine perspective, that big bowl of raw salad in the winter is actually, it's not healthy. Um, we need to focus more on soups and stews and broths and some salty um, things as well as some lovely yeah, lovely dark leafy green vegetables, very helpful for the kidneys. Um, yeah, so I think that's it for today. I hope that was helpful. Um, feel free to leave me any questions if you'd like um, in the comments. And yeah, this was, this was a fun one. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, take care.